Hey guys, Forrest here with Fofo Astro and today it's time for observatory build video part three. So we now have the foundation dug out. I don't know if you guys are following me on Instagram, but I'm posting stories kind of as this progresses. Basically I've shoveled out the foundation. I've also used a post hole digger to dig uh, below the frost line in that hole, which for here is about three feet. So I got about a three foot hole down there and then all the grass dug out. So the plan for today is we're gonna pour the first half of the pier and we're gonna look at pouring concrete as well as reinforcing that concrete with rebar um, and kind of walking through that whole process. We're gonna pour the pier up to ground level today with the rebar sticking out of it. Then we're gonna pour the rest of the pier once that part dries and once I do some more calculations because the height of the pier is actually a super important calculation as well as the pier top plate, the way that we connect the concrete pier to the telescope, which will be the topic of another video. For today though, we're gonna get that pier up to ground level and then we'll pour the rest of the pier in another video and we'll also gravel and then start the construction process. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna get all the ingredients out here. We're gonna start mixing some concrete, reinforcing with rebar, and I'll catch up with you guys as we have more to talk about. All right, so here we are. We are um, just gonna do a little voiceover for this section. Basically here I am uh, using some rebar wire to tie together four pieces of four foot rebar. And the idea here is that the rebar is long enough that it can sink into the hole, uh, have concrete poured all the way around it and then extend up into the next pour. Because for this concrete pour, we're only going level to the ground. For the next one, we'll put a sono tube over the top of what's sticking out and we'll do the second pour to actually build the pier. Uh, but this one's relatively easy. Here I am mixing concrete. This is just a simple, small mixing tub from Home Depot. Uh, this cost about five bucks. I didn't really want to mar up my new wheelbarrow. You guys will learn uh, concrete is really sticky and gets on everything. Um, at the end of this video, I talk about washing down your stuff, but basically don't want to use anything that you care that much about. So here I am mixing the concrete. Uh, they give you the right dilution instructions on the concrete bag, but I like to just kind of run with it and, and do my own thing. I've mixed a lot of concrete in my life, so I, I like to do it that way. Dumping it into the hole, getting that set, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sink that rebar into the hole and get it right in the right place, try to get it roughly level, uh, and then we're gonna mix another bag of concrete and we're gonna add that one in there, and then together we'll be pretty much complete. Uh, a couple things to look for when you're pouring concrete is don't get it on yourself and also try not to inhale it. I'm kind of holding my breath every time I dump that out of the bag. Um, it's just not the best stuff to breathe in. Also, get pre-mixed concrete. Don't mix your own. Um, I also recommend not the fast setting kind. I think uh, just the standard like quickcrete high strength is what I use. And I like the 60 pound bags because they're a little bit more manageable than the 80 pound bags. Uh, it's just, you know, how much you want to be able to fill with it. You can see it's hailing. I'm leveling out my rebar and there we are. One quick thing with concrete before I forget to say it wash everything as soon as you're done because as soon as that concrete starts to dry it like absolutely bonds to everything so you want to like rinse your tools down you probably saw me do that or step away before i even leveled this because uh, it's going to dry on that stuff way quicker than it's going to dry in the hole and so you just want to make sure that you do that wash it off of everything so a little mortar mixing tub i was using a hoe to do the mixing you could obviously wear gloves and use your hands. That's actually what I did with my big observatory, but it's a lot easier with just using a tool. Super sweet, one bag at a time. Consistency wise, I'm always a little hit and miss about it. They give you a instructions on the bag for how much water to use. Um, honestly, I find that I like mine a little bit soupier. It's less, I'm sure it's less strong. It's not the recommendation, but it's just a little easier to work with. So personally, I add a little bit more water than I probably should. Again, with this pier, I'm not too worried about it. It's not like it's a house. It's not a structural thing, so I'm not too too concerned with that. So where we are right now, we've got the concrete poured up to the ground level with the rebar sticking out of it. And you'll notice that the rebar is sticking out further than the ground level, and that's because that sono tube that I was fitting on the end there, that's gonna go in next, and we're gonna fill that with concrete to the height that the eventual pier will actually be. So the reason we have the rebar is because that rebar is gonna allow us to go up the and basically connect what we just poured with the pier that goes upwards. If you don't have that rebar sticking out, there's nothing that connects those two separate pours of concrete and it just loses a lot of strength. So you really want this first pour to be directly into the ground so it bonds with the ground and then the second pour to be into the tube rebarred to the first one. Now I might have to add a little bit of rebar depending on how high I want my pier to eventually be. Like I said at the beginning, and concrete's pretty weak on its own, so you want to make sure that you've got um, rebar strengthening that concrete throughout its entirety. Fairly simple process. I think uh, the sono tube, all the concrete that I needed for this whole thing, 
as well as the rebar. This first step cost about 50 bucks at Home Depot, and that's assuming needing to buy one of those tubs to mix the concrete in. So literally everything I needed, and the wire and the rebar and all of that kind of stuff. So fairly straightforward process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wait about a week, a few days for this to cure. Once it's cured, I'm gonna have the height of the pier figured out. We're gonna do the next pour of the pier. The next pour of the pier is super important because that's where we actually sink the pier top plate into the concrete, which is what the scope mounts to. So this part's super easy, not really much detail attention needed. Things gotta be roughly level, but not perfect. The next pour is where we get the level pier, we get it the right height, we also get the pier top plate mounted to it, all of which need to be perfect in order for everything to work. So this was kind of a chill day, it gets you used to mixing concrete, learning the ropes, and then the next pour is where things get a little bit more real and a little bit more serious. So I will catch you guys in the next one. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you guys have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. Last video, you guys actually gave me some suggestions for the design, which was awesome. So if I'm doing any of this wrong, don't feel like you're trolling me. I'd love to learn something. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Clear skies, unlike right now. <laughs> Bye.